I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dyke has retired. The overwhelming success of United States submarines during World War II has been thoroughly documented in history. And the most popular way of measuring that success was to reckon it in total tonnage sunk. True, this was the handiest way, but far from the only one. For tonight's story concerns the USS Hawkbill, which in its fourth war patrol derived almost incredible satisfaction through the sinking of a single enemy vessel. The one victory they wanted more than anything else in the world. The USS Hawkbill, under the command of Commander Worth Scanlon, began a fourth patrol in Fremantle, Australia, in early April of 1945. If there's any change in his condition, let me know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wrong, Fred. Sonar man, Captain. They just rushed into the hospital, ruptured appendix. Is he in danger? No, he'll be all right, but making our next patrol without our best operator. I've got an appointment with the squadron commander. While I'm there, I'll make arrangements for a replacement. Have you completed a check on a refit yet? Yes, sir. We're in fine shape all the way around. Glad to hear it. I got a hunch we'll have to be. Nothing definite, just a hunch. Commander Scanlon had put the wheels in motion. And two days later, he had his sonar operator. Kramer, radio man, first class reporting, sir. Lieutenant Tucker, exec. Welcome aboard, Kramer. Thank you, sir. Yes, Logan? Uh, Captain would like to see you below, Mr. Tucker. Oh, very well. This is Bill's replacement, Kramer. See that he gets bunked down. Hmm? Yes, sir. My, you son of a gun. How about this small world, Ben, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah, well, come on, let me get you settled. We got about four years talking to do, you know. Come on. Everything ready, Fred? Yes, sir. Bill's replacement just showed, and all hands are aboard. Let's shove off, then. Long way to go. Your uh, hunch work out, sir? I think it has a fair chance. Our patrol area is the Java Sea. Shallow water, lots of mines. On 5 May 1945, the USS Hawkbill slipped quietly away from its Fremantle boring. The 45-day war patrol had begun. Done some catching up. Odd. Standing the same kind of watch, you sure don't give us much of a chance at it. Well, sure ain't nobody can say to save with New Jersey's without representatives, huh? Sure looks like it. How long's it been, Odd? Four, five years? About that. Hey, I heard you've done a lot of patrols. Yeah, this is number 14. 14? <laughs> I guess this tops anybody on board. Yeah. Hey, what's with us talking shop? You remember that little gal you used to go with? Little one? Ruth. Yeah, that's her. Real cute. You ever see her? I'd like to. I married her. Look, Bonnie, let's pick this up again some other time. Huh? I got a watch coming up. Sure, huh? Sure. Hey, Barney, see, you looking happier. I never saw a change like that. Never. Funny thing about the years, you never know what they're going to do to a guy. Well, whatever they did to him, I don't like it. Ah, it'll work out. Look, Kovacs, we were buddies, close. This ain't the same guy, not a nickel's worth. On 16 May 1945, Hawkville entered her patrol area an extremely dangerous area for many reasons, two of which were, in Captain Scanlon's own words, shallow water and lots of mines. Looks quiet enough, Captain. For the moment. I've been looking at the charts. Won't uh, Frank Ladder be in this area with the Legardo? He sure will. How we get to see him? It's been a long time. Much too long. Plane bearing 020. Friendly aircraft. I'm taking no chances. Clear the bridge. Dive, dive.
Level off at 140 feet. Level off at 140 feet. 140 feet, sir. I think he's friendly? Downright unfriendly, I'd call him. An hour later, undamaged, Hawk built surface, coming up into low-lying fog. The area showed no trace of the enemy, but there were problems just the same, the poor visibility being only one of them. Fred? In the conning tower a little while ago, did you notice anything, well, odd? Sonar man, sir? Kramer? Kramer. What did you think? I'm not sure, Captain. There was something. It didn't look like fear, though. Not with his record. He's had depth charges thrown at him before. But you're, well, what's he like? He's quiet. Seems to keep pretty much to himself. Yeah, too much now that I think of it. Anything else? Just an impression, but... Yeah, well, there's a... a resentment as close as I could come. Well, have a talk with him. If he's got a problem, I want to know about it. Captain, ship bearing 020. Can't make her out. The visibility. Clear the bridge. Dive. Dive. <laughs> Hey, Eric, look at this. Twice in an hour. You sure can't complain about the action on this pipe. Wouldn't do me much good if I did, would it? Six zero. Ready on one six zero. Was hoping for better pickings. Take a look. Looks like our gun crew draw first blood. We'll close range to three thousand yards, then go up and get her. Let's go to battle stations. Aye, aye, sir. Battle stations. Gun action. Battle stations. Gun action. of the patrol. But in combat, a smile can quickly vanish. Captain Scanlon was to prove the point by nightfall. The standard procedure of checking the status of a submarine suspected of being lost in action was simple, but effective. Command headquarters in Perth would broadcast coded messages on schedule. One of these would require a reply from the sub in question. For several days, message number 78 addressed to the Legato had been repeated on every scheduled transmission. Nothing? No, sir, Legato still doesn't answer. Captain, I know how close you and Frank Latta are. But don't jump to conclusions. Maybe he's forced to maintain a radio silence. Maybe his radio's out. Maybe any of a dozen things. Thanks, Fred. I know all the maybes. They're just tougher to buy where Frank is concerned. Did you have a talk with that boy on sonar, Kramer? If you could call it a talk. He listens, answers. He never steps out of line, but there's always that, well, that resentment. I think I'll have a talk with him. Radio contact, sir. Lugano? No, the Bea. She's on her way home. They'll pass us tonight about 0220. Captain Jarvis wants a rendezvous. 
Answer affirmative. Aye, aye, sir. Captain. It'll be a long time till 0220. The Bay and Legardo are working together. It's a wolf pack. At 0220, Bay and Hawkbill rendezvous. Welcome aboard, Ben. You know Fred Tucker, my exec? Captain? Uh, don't think a little coffee would do any harm, do you, Ben? Might help, Whip. Let's give it a try. How sure are you, Ben? You knew Frank and I were working as a two-sub wolf pack. We came up with this convoy escorted by a light mine layer. He was equipped with 10-centimeter radar. She picked up our approach and drove us off with gunfire. Frank and I rendezvoused and worked out a plan. He was to dive on the convoy's track at one point, and I was to strike from a point 12 miles ahead. I did, and we were driven off. I never saw the Legardo again. Couldn't raise her on the radio. And we don't really know. Frank was... is a great skipper. Maybe he... Oh, Worth, don't. Sure. Sure. I knew you'd want to hear it in person. A thing like that's kind of cold over the radio. Appreciate it, Ben. You can do one more thing. That mine layer. I want to know everything about her you can think of, particularly her movements. Captain, I want you to know how sorry I am about Frank Ladder. Thanks, Fred. I know how close you were, what a fine man he was. Fine man? Great man's more like it. I can't stop thinking about something that happened a few years back. My wife and son were living in Hawaii. So were Frank and his wife. so hard to be both parents. I guess I haven't done a very good job. Yeah, of course you have. It's just that it's an impossible job, especially with a sensitive, affectionate youngster. I wish there was a pill for this, Mrs. Scanlon. One that would work. The doctor had no solution, but somebody else did the moment he heard about it. Frank Lada, every day for a solid year, no matter what his duties were, he made it a point to spend a couple of hours with my boy, be a substitute father. I never had a chance to pay him back for it. I think now I know how. Here's the way I figure it, Fred. The mine layer that got the Legardo. She originated her voyage here in Singapore, crossed the Gulf this way on a northern journey. Logic says she should be making her return trip via the same route. Now, if we hang around in this position here, we might just be able to do a little paying off. Sure worth a try, Captain. Less than 24 hours later, Hawkbill had reached his selected position. 
a position northwest of Pulo Tangal Island, just inside the mouth of the Gulf of Siam. Well, well. Not the mine layer, sir. First crack out of the box? This will have to come first. Northbound convoy, two small freighters. Kamikaze class destroyers, the escort, and the target. Let's get her. Battle stations, down scope. Battle stations. You were right about it being shallow, Captain. There's only 40 feet under the keel. Can't be helped. Up scope. Make ready all torpedo tubes. Set depth at four feet. Very Mark. Three one zero. Range. Mark. Two two double oh. Yeah. Shoot. Fire one. Fire three. Taking evasive action. Stand by stern tubes. She's trying to ram. Take a deep emergency. On stern plane, shooking the hand. Can't hold her down. I need more speed. All ahead, full. Pull the auxiliary from sea. She's holding now. 80 feet. 85. 90. Off Bill Bottom heavily at 110 feet and remained there for four grueling hours during which the kamikaze made three deliberate attacks, passing directly overhead each time, dropping her depth charges in deadly pattern. Survival was little short of a miracle, but Hawk Bill was meant to survive. Yes, he figured he'd nail this. He sure tried hard enough. Repairs? Coming along, Captain. At best, we'll still have gyro-angle regulators, radars, and one antenna out of commission. Fred, we've got every right to hit home. But I still want that mine layer. I've got the hunt this time, Captain. We'll get them. time saying goodbye to Passaic there. How about you? Hey, wait a minute, Art. Just wait a minute. I think it's about time we had us a little talk. Now, what's with you? I want to know. Old times gives me the right. Right? Everybody's got rights for me. Everybody but me. Me and Ruth. What? All right, you ask. Now, you listen and listen good. Did you ever hear of an R.H. blood factor? No. Okay. Ask a doctor. I'll give it to you in $12 words. But what it boils down to is this. It's dangerous for Ruth to have kids. Real dangerous. We know. We already lost two. And now she's having another one. Where am I, Barney? Out in the stinking tub when I should be back there with her. Oh, sure, I almost made it. Thirteen patrols and I was on my way home to be with her. And some poor guy gets a case of appendicitis. Where does that leave me? Nice, huh? Oh, that's rough. Oh, that's the brakes. It is, huh? What is it? Listen, there's more. A shellacking like we just took? Do we turn around and head for home? Huh. Because we got a glory hound in the cunning tower. He wants to get himself a mine way. Now, wait a minute. What do you mean, wait a minute? That's enough, Kramer. Glory hound? A man who already holds the Navy Cross, three silver stars, the Legion of Merit, and two unit commendation ribbons. It makes sense to you he needs glory? 
Sir, I... You're too wrapped up in your own troubles, Kramer. You forget the next man. Sure, the skipper wants that mine layer. More than anything else in the world. I don't have to, Kramer. But I'm going to tell you why. If anyone should be able to understand, you're the one. There was no way of knowing it, but Hawk Bill had only a very short time to wait. A matter of hours. All yours, Captain. My lair. What do you know? Might even be the right one. Down scope. Make ready all torpedo tubes. Set depth to three feet. Sixteen fathoms isn't much working room. But we're gonna get this guy if we have to put wheels on the boat. Work to gray, sir. Depth set at three feet. Very well. Final observation and shoot. Bearing mark? Zero two eight. Range mark? One five double O. Set fire one. is loaded. Hit amidships. Now we can go home. Then I got a radio message I want sent right away. Come in. You sent for me, sir? Thought you might appreciate a little tip. The chief of boat is a great cigar smoker. You can get them from him. Sir? Save me one when you pass them around. Six pound boy is pretty good. Sir, I don't know how to thank you. Already told you. Save me a cigar. That's all. Thank you, sir. For him, sir, he looks like a man who got what he wanted. That makes two of us, Fred. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. You have just seen the story of the Hawk Bill's revenge. Now I'd like to introduce the man who was actually her commanding officer during that patrol, Captain Worth Scanlon. Welcome aboard, Worth. Uh, thanks for a most provocative and memorable story. Thanks for telling it so well. It brought back a lot of memories. Satisfaction as well from the look on your face while you were watching the film. In more ways than one, Tommy. Being able to avenge Frank, well, there just aren't any words to describe the feeling. That's easy to appreciate. But there is a feeling I can describe. Gratitude. My gratitude to the officers and men of Hawk Bill. We were a close-knit team, and this was a job all of us wanted to do. And you certainly did it, too. Tommy, if I may, I'd like to touch on one more thing, something you're very familiar with from your own days in the conning tower. I'm pretty sure I know what's on your mind, but I wish you'd say it anyway for both of us. Well, it's the wonderful spirit of closeness that might be called a hallmark of submariners. Officers and men living, working, and fighting as a trained combat unit. I know it exists in all branches of the service, but I think it comes into sharpest focus in a submarine. I'm very proud to have been a part of it. You're really speaking for both of us, Worth. I want to thank you for the fine story, as well as your personal visit. Wouldn't have missed it for anything. Be with us again when we bring you another true and exciting submarine story of the silent service. Mm -hmm.